Hi, I'm Jennifer from CGJC Tools and today we're going to be making this. In this video we're going to go over ambient occlusion. We're going to discuss what it is, how it's calculated, how to create render layers, how to use it inside of Maya using Arnode Renderer, and how to composite it using an After Effects. Let's begin with what is ambient occlusion. It is not a natural phenomenon. It is a fake 3D shadowing effect. In these real life photographs you can see that with one object comes into close contact with another object, the shadow is darker and crisper. And as that object recedes from the contact of that other object, the shadow has a nice gradual fall off. We can fake this using ambient occlusion. You can try to do this with lighting inside of Arnold, but it's going to take you a lot longer and you may not achieve that same look. By having a pass that focuses on those contact points alone, you can do a lot of editing work and compositing that can really enhance the believability of your renders. An ambient occlusion pass will look like this. It's a black and white image and you can see that it's much darker in the points of contact. To understand it better, let's discuss how it's calculated. So at render time, Arnold Renderer sends out rays to the geometry in your scene. If that ray comes in contact with another component in the scene, the renderer knows that that region has to be darker. If the ray doesn't find a nearby surface, then that area will be lighter. So let's dive into Maya on how to create an ambient occlusion pass. For this video, I'm going to use this 3D bell that I modeled, UV'd, shade, textured, lit, and rendered in an earlier video series. If you haven't seen it, I'll put the link in this video, and you can also see the link in the description below. In that series, we just did a beauty pass render. Now, I just added a white ground plane and rendered it here. I really like my beauty pass, and I don't want to bypass it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a render layer. If you click this icon with the clapper and the two papers, you open up the render setting window. This layer that's called scene is the layer that we're currently looking at. You know that we're looking at it because the eyeball is turned on. The clapper next to it is also enabled. It just means that this layer is renderable. If I come here to where it says no layers, I can create a new layer. I just have to click this icon with the plus sign and you can see a layer immediately is created. The clapper is enabled and the eyeball is disabled. This indicates that we're currently not looking at this layer. If I enable it, you will see that the scene layer has an eyeball disabled now and everything in my scene has disappeared. That's because we haven't put anything inside of this layer. Before we do, let's rename this AO. AO is the abbreviation for ambient occlusion. To start adding things to this layer, we have to right click on the layer and select create collection. Once that collection is made, I have new things pop up in my window to the right. I'm going to switch my eyeball back to the beauty pass and select the geometry that I want to include in the AO pass. In my case, I want everything in the scene to be included. Depending on your scene and what you need, you can do separate AO passes for separate geometry. With my collection highlighted in this window, I'm going to select the geometry I need and click on Add. You can see that the geometry names are immediately added to the list. If I switch my eyeball now, you can see that the geometry is in my scene. The next thing I have to do is tell Arnold that this is going to be an ambient occlusion pass. The way I do this is with a shader. Arnold calculates ambient occlusion based on an ambient occlusion shader. So if you right click the collection, the first thing we have to do is create an override. In this case, we're going to create a shader override. It automatically creates a collection and an override inside of that first collection. This second collection doesn't need to be altered. It's an additional collection that Maya makes. Where it says shader override, you have to plug in a shader. We can do this by clicking on this checkerboard icon. We then have the materials list, and we're going to look for AI ambient occlusion. If we go to our attribute editor, we see we have it selected and we can see all the attributes that pertain to it. If we hit render, you can immediately see that the AO is working. We have a black and white image focusing on our contact points between our geometries. You can stop here, but I suggest you keep watching because now we're going to go over the different attributes and how to improve your ambient occlusion pass to get most out of your render. The first attribute is samples. This controls the quality. If you increase this, you eliminate a lot of the noise in your render. For testing purposes, we're going to leave it low, but for final render purposes, you'd want to increase this number one number at a time while doing render tests. 
not increasing it too high because your render times will also increase the higher this number is. The spread controls how wide the shadow is going to be. If I lower this to 0.1 and render, you see a big difference of how far that shadow is spreading. In most cases, you won't have to adjust this value because you have another value that's more important called the falloff. The falloff is an exponential rate for the distance upon which the ray is traveling. If I put this number to 10 and render, you see that everything went white. This value is way too high for my scene. The falloff is something that you necessarily don't have to increase a huge amount. It just depends on your scene, the number of objects you have, and the scale of your objects. So I'll dial this number down and render again. You can see that this is much better. I have focused shadows that are more concentrated on the contact points. I don't typically adjust the near clip plane or the far clip plane, but we can still go over it. The near clip plane determines the minimal occlusion distance sampled. I'm going to put the spread and fall off back to their default so you can see how the near clip plane is affecting this image. If I increase it, you see I have white areas where it used to be black. The far clip is the maximum occlusion distance sampled. It's sort of doing something similar to my fall off in that it limits how far the occlusion can spread. Usually you can achieve this look with the fall off. The next setting here is color. Color is something that I rather adjust in compositing as I have more control to make changes. If you change these to something like blue or red and later you change your mind and want green or yellow, it will be very hard to change that in the composite. You might have to re-render. If you have a black and white image, it's much easier to adjust the color to any color you want at any point in composite. These are all the main settings that you will ever really need to start rendering an ambient occlusion. So now you can start rendering it. If you pay extra to have the Arnold plugin features, you can batch render. You can also render layers at the same time. This means that any layer that has the clapper enabled, as soon as you go to batch render, it will render out one layer. Once it's done, it will start rendering the next layer automatically. If you do not have the extra Arnold plugin features, then you have to render sequence. And when you render sequence, it doesn't take into account the render layers. So the clapper icon being enabled or disabled doesn't really affect it. So in that instance, you'd have to turn on the visibility of one layer and then go to render sequences to render it. As soon as that's done, you'd have to switch your eyeball to the next layer that you want to render and then go through render sequences again. A very important side note to keep in mind is that some versions of Maya had a glitch where if you left your eyeball enabled on a layer that was not the scene layer, you saved your file, quit Maya, the next time you'd open Maya, your render layers would be gone. Some versions of Maya have fixed this issue, but some have not. So you might want to do a test to see which version of Maya you're utilizing and to see if you have this glitch. The last thing I want to show you is how to composite your AO pass. I just rendered one frame and I'm going into After Effects. You can use Nuke or Photoshop depending what you're doing. In After Effects, I have my Beauty Pass and my AO Pass on top of it. Now, if you switch the AO Pass layer from Normal to Multiply, you can see how these two are now integrated. If I wanted to decrease the intensity, I could lower the opacity. I can also create a Levels effect. By doing so, I can increase and decrease both my blacks and my whites, and I have a lot of control of how this image is going to look. As you can see, there's a lot of possibilities here. Another thing you may want to do is colorize this shadow. Not all shadows are black. They usually have a bit of color depending what they're next to. In After Effects, we can apply a hue and saturation effect and click the colorize check mark. Here, you can adjust the hue and find the color that you want. If you increase or decrease the saturation, you can get a darker or lighter version of that color. You have a lot of control in the composite of how you can use this layer. So have fun and experiment with it. So now you know what an ambient occlusion is, how it's calculated at render time, how to make one, how to use render layers, and how to use it in a composite. And that concludes our video. A virtual high five and a round of applause for learning something new. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Also check out our links below for some cool CG stuff, our social media pages, and our Patreon page. I'll see you in the next video.